Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. My name is Moshe. That's my wife. Her name is Natasha. And she's signing off. This is her final episode of the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Well, Joe Rogan asked me to be his co-host. <laughs> sidekick. You'd make a great sidekick. And I it's really good, would. And it's good timing, actually, for you to make that move. Howard Stern, remember? Robin, she was good. You'd be a great Robin. Hey, um... I just want to point Wait, out. Wait, is that what I am? Yeah, you're my Robin, definitely. Oh my god. Yeah, definitely. No, I'm not. This is like my podcast, and you're my like plus one underling. Actually, what this is is this is your slow descent into a uh, full blown hypocrisy. I don't know if you guys can see on the video, but Natasha is wearing Crocs, honey, fur lined Crocs. I don't want people to know that they said you're that on it was, camera. No, but she said it was only neck oh, up. God. It doesn't matter. You give me all this shit about getting Tevas. I re- realize they're called Tevas. And you were a mother freaking Crocs. Actually, she bought me a pair. I got to be honest. It's a real nice. Well, they're fur lined. Yeah. They're fur. Real mink. That's what's crazy. They cost $1,200 a piece. They're like $45. It's I not real I got them fur. on Amazon. I feel guilty. Why do you feel guilty? Because um, I just like looked. It's just so convenient. I just... Oh, you feel guilty for shopping on Amazon. But I always complain about Jeff Bezos and now I have a bit about him. So I'm like talking about him every night. And then I'm like, meanwhile, coming home and like someone's like, oh, tangerine Crocs fur lined size five and a half. Here's the thing about Amazon. Here they are. And then they're there by a drone the next morning. Here's the thing about Amazon and everything else. As they say, I did not make this up. This is not profound of me to say. But as they say, there are no ethical choices under capitalism. Yeah. And, um... And it doesn't matter. They got you by the balls. You, you think the bank that you, you avoid shopping at Amazon, so you go put your money in the bank, you think that bank isn't funding fucking, you know, right. uh, 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 warlords in, in war-torn countries? No. You think, oh, no, I'm going to go to Target instead. I'll do my shopping in person at Target. Well, you think Target is giving all of its money to AIDS research? No. You're fucked no matter what you do. So you might as well just do what you do. I mean, look, if somebody's like a, a outright you know, avowed anti-Semite. I'm, I'm not giving my money to Whoopi Goldberg. No, I'm just kidding. I love you, Whoopi. Whoopi doesn't need your money. <laughs> I know. I know. She doesn't want your money. She doesn't need my money. She's a Goldberg. And I support her. I mean, look, hey, what can you That's do? That's a pretty hilarious name. Whoopi Goldberg? Yes. <laughs> well, listen, we should bring our guest in. I mean, in. how funny. Okay. Well, we, I, I, she's, she's been waiting. So let's just bring her in. Speaking of the internet, speaking of choices of the internet. And hilarious. Not only is this person... Uh, a famous comedian, but prior to that, uh, I'm going. I want to talk about this. She used to work for Google and Yahoo. Did she really? Yeah. Oh, wait, maybe we she sh- can give us some have, insights. Let's have this talk with her because my perspective is so warped. Like, well, let's, I, oh, okay. Yes. I was gonna say one more thing. Oh, never mind. No, go ahead. No, let's invite her. Let's bring her on in. Uh, we're very lucky to have her. Uh, of course, you may know her from many of her viral videos during the Trump era or her Netflix special. Uh, the very funny, and she wrote a couple books as well. I want to talk to her about that. The very funny, very hilarious, the debut of Sarah Cooper. Hi, Hi. Sarah. How you doing? Hello, I'm well. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Oh, it's uh, yeah, it's nighttime in New York City, huh? Your whole vibe is like I can just feel it. Yeah, it's coming through with that with the nighttime New York. Are you like on what floor are you on? Well, I don't want to say because you know people might stalk me. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so <laughs> wait, wait. You think they'll just get the floor number and come to every building in New York and go to the forty fifth floor, <laughs> Sarah? <laughs> no, I just when I lived in New York, I never really saw that many views, and so like whenever I see someone's house with a view, it just seems like cool to live. You know, like you feel like you're in the city. It's so nice. I love it so much. Did you all not notice my British accent? Well, yeah. Okay, Sarah, let me be let me be perfectly <laughs> honest with you. Hold on. Let me be perfectly honest. We don't know each other that well. And so I was you, just like, wait, she's British. Right. So that's, I had the same I had the same reaction. I'm like, I think I'm supposed to comment on this and, and, and make fun of it. But I don't know for sure that she's not British. Like maybe I just missed that. And somehow. So we noticed. Okay. Awesome. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it was so unassuming too. Well, I'm saying if you, if I had if if you if I had you'd picked up and I had had like a, a a thick Israeli accent, would you have said something like "What the fuck"? Or would you have just kind of been like, "Oh, I didn't know." Yeah, I didn't know if you guys had seen me in interviews or anything. I didn't know if I'd be able to convince you that I'm a British. <laughs> well, Wait, you, that is such a that's such a great way to make. <laughs> 
to make to see if like people have really done their research too before <laughs> right. you're a guest. <laughs> I know, but also you. It, you you made the right choice in going into comedy and not like uh, you know spies spy games or things like that because you gave up the ghost on your little bit like thirty thirty two lines in you were like listen I'm not British motherfucker it's me you know you know what I had this fantasy beforehand when I planned this out that I would keep it up the whole time <laughs> and it would get written up in Vulture and all kinds of places <laughs> but oh well I mean a lot happened for me the first response was super british and i was like okay maybe she's british but also maybe she's had a rough pandemic like you don't know maybe she did a madonna situation and but then the second line you kind of stopped committing and so then i was like maybe i imagined the first line being british there was a lot happening for me how are you well i anyway there it is <laughs> anyway it's so nice to meet you both. nice to meet you too it's great to meet you we're fans yeah we're big fans and we also wanted to um, ask you just kind of a really easy question. Um, just right off the bat, we like to ask our guests, um, do you think it's okay to simultaneously make fun of capitalism and also reap its rewards? Be- and benefit <laughs> from it. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts? I think if anybody is actively, you know, against capitalism while also reaping the benefits, they should kill themselves. Oh, well... <laughs> Perhaps do you live on a floor high enough that it would be easy to facilitate our imminent suicide? That's why I live up here because I'm planning. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's it, it's this is a really tough question, but it's a really easy answer. Obviously, it's okay because we all do it, right? Right. But, okay, that's good. Yeah. No. And by the way, this isn't a question we ask everybody. Well, we she, were we were just talking about it. So. Yeah. Well, she was saying how guilty she feels every time she shops on uh, certain certain websites, you know, that have Prime um, oh, membership. Yes. And, yeah. uh, and then at night I'll go out up, up on stage and make fun of Jeff Bezos. Right. And, and then I'll, I keep absolutely. like, <laughs> I had the same thing happen to me. Yes. Like last week. Um, one day I was promoting my calendar, which is available on certain bad websites. <laughs> and the next day I was making fun of Jeff Bezos and his yacht because they're taking <laughs> down a bridge to have the yacht go through. And then I was like, wait, what am I doing? I'm, I need him, but I'm making fun of him. You know? I, that's what I, I, I can't s- believe your same thing was about Jeff Bezos. Well, he's, Wait. he is truly everywhere. How do I say it? Bezos? Is it Bezos? I think it's Bechos. Be- that's <laughs> Jewish or anti Semitic. I can't tell which one. It might be Bezos. Bechos. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good time for anti Semitism, Sarah. Don't worry. Um, do you so, have any thoughts on that, Mosh? Oh. On, on participating in the Capitol. Oh, go ahead, Sarah. What? Oh, no, I just wanted to make sure that you knew that I wasn't trying to be (laughs) anti-Semitic. And by the way, Sarah, when this podcast delves in anti-Semitism, as it always does, you can also tell us after we record, cut that part out, and it'll be gone. So really, really let really let your true self shine through. No, but it was very clear that you were not. (laughs) But anyway, what what was I saying? My thoughts on capitalism and... Well, is that is kind of the, the that's the trap that we all find this is not what the podcast is about by the way but th- we find ourselves in that trap which is that we all make fun of the things that we participate in we all participate in the things that we recognize are destroying the world there's no way out there isn't a way out that's what i was saying it's like you can't transfer your I, yes i wrote a paper about the i think it was the unabomber yeah the guy who was mailing bombs yeah mm-hmm. but he was so anti society anti you know everything that that we built to help each other but he had to use the postal service <laughs> right. he relied on to do right, so it right. was like you're using the thing that you're against you right know? right and that's right. what we're all doing he's like bring down the governmental infrastructure but i do oh wow that actually the usps does have really reasonable uh, shipping rates so you can ship a bomb <laughs> for yeah. much less than ups or dhl but isn't it a question of degree? You know, it's like it's 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 if you can shame the corporations enough and then they can just, you know, the it just goes a little bit more off center. I mean, it's like how you can't shame them and also be living your life. Yeah, you can do it all. You have to do it all because we live in an unethical society. Um, all right. Yeah. Right, Sarah? What do you think? Absolutely. I mean, we you know, we have to shame. We will. You know, they, we have to shame them into letting the uh, workers form labor unions. You know, we have to right. shame them into paying them more and giving them, you know, what they need to survive. We need to shame them into doing better. Shame is the only way. The good and so news. shame is like you making fun of them on stage, me making fun of them on stage and then like trying to get. But it's like boycotting 
But then I'm a total hypocrite. I'm like, I want to shame them and not boycott it. Well, anyway. Okay. If anyone has any ideas, please let me know. I have a question, Sarah. I've got a question. Um, you wrote a book about um, not how, how to not intimidate men with uh, how for successful women not to intimidate men with their success, right? That is an interesting interpretation of the title. Well, what, <laughs> t- t- tell us. <laughs> It is called How to Be Successful Without Hurting Men's Feelings. Okay, that feels very similar. <laughs> I could be I, I mean, could that be is reading such it such a great title. I could be reading it through a male a male uh, uh, you milieu. think? <laughs> but see, the interesting thing about Moshe is that he like is really into girls being successful, Not girls. attractive. He like only is attracted to a woman who has like a lot of money. <laughs> And <laughs> a career and outshines him. That's cool about you. Well, this is what I was going to ask you, Sarah. Most guys aren't like that. Is that you wrote that book and then got, you got even more successful since? How has has your success made men more hurt hurt their feelings even further? How's it going <laughs> out there? I guess what I'm asking is, how's it going in those New York streets for Sarah Cooper? <laughs> Um, I did get divorced. Okay. Wow. <laughs> well, there you go. So, yeah, that was a rough one. That was a. <laughs> I was I was talking to someone and they were like, "Oh yeah, well that happened to me the first pandemic." What and divorce? No, like she was just like talking about the the pandemic and like she was just referring to the, I guess the original, uh, the original version of the virus as the first pandemic. <laughs> so oh. like now we're in like, anyway, I guess my point is it's been a while. Yes. It's been a rough little while. It feels like it? it's been two pandemics. So, I mean, I don't understand how anyone is still together, except we have a great relationship, uh, but we're all, we're on the rocks, <laughs> Sarah. Uh, and by the way, you don't have to answer this question if you don't want. Okay. You got divorced. Uh, have you been get, have you been getting out there? Are you trying? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing someone who actually was the person who I went on my very first date with. Ever in life? What? The first date post divorce or first date ever in life? No, it was my first date post divorce. Yes. Oh, interesting. And where did you guys find each other? Um, it's a it's an app for uh, <laughs> celebrity singles. Ooh, Got I it. like that. You farmer, mean like farmer meat, farmer's meat, right? <laughs> it's like one step up from Raya, right? Oh, it's no, more it than Raya? Raya. Oh, it is Raya. Oh. I didn't know there was a Raya plus. That would be cool. <laughs> they got to You should do that. We should make a list Raya because there's a lot of riffraff on Raya. Honestly. I would let Sarah in the a list Raya. There's a lot of dubstep DJs and like aspiring influencers. It's so true. I got a pitch. We contact Jeff Bichos and we say we want to do Raya Prime. And and it's for a listers only. You pay you pay a, a, a six figures a year. You get to Raya Prime, and that's when you get into your Sarah Coopers, your Brad, Brad Bradley Pitts, people like oh, that. Br- I love Bradley Pitt. I love a Bradley oh, Pitt. I love Bradley Pitt. <laughs> and then they deliver the dates to you. That's right, right, right. And and whether or not they want to come, because it's it's also extremely unethical. It's a truly unethical yeah. interface. Well, okay. So now you're in. You're you're dating someone. You've had success uh, uh, in dating, and you've uh, so you feel imminently qualified to give advice. How would you feel about giving some of our callers relationship advice? Oh, I am an expert in everything. Oh, hell yes, for sure. Let's do it. Okay, awesome. What do we think? I kind of want to ask her about our relationship. Let's see how you do on this one. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe you can help us. Okay, this ours. is going to freak you out because I know you're extremely worried about stalkers. You didn't even want to say your uh, your floor number. But the person we're going to call right now is uh, uh, Peru is their name. And they live, you're not going to like this, Sarah, in New York City. They're right next door. You don't know where <laughs> they are. They could be right there. <laughs> hey, Tosh. Hey, Mosh. You're looking pretty fertile. Oh, thank you. Are you, are you fertile? I'm actually not, but I like that I'm still fertile to you. You'll always be fertile to me, hon. <laughs> but I remember when we were having a hard time figuring out fertility stuff, you went through the ringer trying to figure out when 
the right time for things to happen and how to have a kid. It was very confusing. Absolutely. That's why we want to recommend Modern Fertility. It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. You mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results in 10 days. You'll get insight on your hormone levels, your ovarian reserve, aka how many eggs you have compared to other women your age, and other important fertility factors. The you, results go deep into what every hormone means and then you can also talk one-on-one with a fertility nurse to review your results and options for the next steps. You know, I actually was, uh, I fought in the ovarian reserves. Oh my God. Traditional testing with your doctor can cost over $1,000, but Modern Fertility gets you the same info at $159. That's a fraction of the price. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash honeymoon, you can get $20 off your test. Listen, take care of your fertility now. It like dwindles fast, and they didn't have this when I was in the fertility market. So right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off their test when you go to modernfertility.com slash honeymoon. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash honeymoon. That means your test will cost 139 instead of the hundreds or thousands it could cost you at a doctor's office. That's modernfertility.com slash honeymoon. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know, we just did a budget meeting, you and I, where we were crunching our numbers and we realized that over the course of the pandemic, our biggest expenditure by far was eating out, ordering delivery food, and it's not even that healthy when you order like that. Yeah, it was it was not the number that I w- was expecting. So we have re-upped our commitment to going back to our friends at Green Chef. Now, in the beginning of the pandemic, we were very diligent about Green Chef, and the food was so good. It saved us money in our budget. It was healthy, and it all came packaged, pre-proportioned, and ready to be cooked. And they have all kinds of diets that are specific to what your dietary needs are. Green Chef is America's number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. Everything's pre-cut, pre-measured. You don't have to go to the dang grocery store, uh, whether you're looking for carb-conscious, gluten-free, plant-based, calorie-conscious. They just give you... We get the vegetarian, and I actually just re-upped our our subscription and did put in our promo code. Heck, oh, you you were saving money on our own. We're, (laughs) we're, We're customers. They won't even give us what we want. We wanted five years free Moshe meals. did ask for some more. I said, can we please have five <laughs> years of free meals? And they politely declined. But listen, are you keto? Are you paleo? Are you any of the things that Natasha mentioned? Even They even have a Mediterranean menu. But here's the most important part. You're wondering, how's it taste? Well, it's delicious. Green Chef is super scrumptious. It's so- got fresh produce, premium proteins. It's, uh, you know, you just feel like you can trust that it's not going to be some... Some caca. Because nobody wants to eat body. caca after a pandemic. So here's the deal. Go to greenchef.com and use the code we used, honeymoon130. Use code honeymoon130 to get yourself $130 off plus free shipping. Go to greenchef.com slash honeymoon130 and use code honeymoon130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Peru. Whoa, Peru. Hi. Hi. Wow. So you're like handsome, I guess. Is that your thing? <laughs> uh, uh, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, come on. Right? Hi, Peru. It's Natasha and our friend Sarah Cooper. Hi, Peru. Hey. I love you. I Peru. just love your whole color palette. <laughs> oh, you thanks. Yeah, you're getting a lot of compliments. Uh, what floor do you live on, Peru? <laughs> The second. See, see how easy see what that I'm was? Saying, though? Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Peru, how can we help? Tell us your situation. Are you looking for advice on plunging your neckline further <laughs> or making the turtleneck more turtly? Uh, I think it's pretty turtly. No, it's turtly. No, um, I think, uh, okay, so just a little bit of context. I've been in New York for most of my 20s, now going into my 30s. I'm turning 31 here in a couple months. And I am noticing this trend, and I'm not sure in straight world, but in gay world, um, it's very much like everyone is in an open relationship or they're in an ethically non-monogamous relationship. And I've been trying the monogamy thing for a while, but I'm starting to kind of lose hope. And I don't know if it's prudish of me to not want to try to be in an open relationship 
or if I just should continue trying monogamy, I'm kind of at a really like difficult time, romantically speaking, because mm. uh, I'm not having much luck with the monogamy thing um, with the gay dudes around here. Have you tried changing your sexual orientation? Um, no, I'm what they call a platinum gay, oh. uh, which means I've never come into contact with a vagina, <laughs> nor do I ever want to. Uh, <laughs> I like your, you've, you've had so little contact with vagina that your hand gesture towards the vagina was a very, I don't, I don't know what you would do yet <laughs> to get away. <laughs> okay. Wow, interesting. Platinum. That's platinum. amazing. Yeah. So What's I'm a gold? C-section baby, so no contact whatsoever. Oh, be, oh, platinum. Gold star is where you've never had sex and platinum. Platinum is where you had a C-section and you've never hooked up with a girl? <laughs> so gold star is you've never hooked up with a girl, but you were like a naturally born kid. But platinum <laughs> is you haven't ever even come into contact with it. Like you're a C-section baby. And I'm a C-section baby. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, incredible. Do you, do, you, do you date based on these um, platinum gold? The criteria, or? right. Do you do platinum <laughs> meetups? Uh, no, no platinum meetups. That's not the criteria. Um, but I will say that in like a lot of the dating apps, and particularly like uh, a gay dating app grinder, a lot of these guys list, you know, that they're in like in open relationships or whatever. Are they like um, open? Re- I'm in an open relationship with a platinum, or I'm in an open relationship <laughs> with no. They don't. I re- I think that's more like I guess like second date talk, not so much mm. like uh, I see, yeah, okay. like first like um, right. book up kind of uh, whatever. Oh, it's like when but, you're when you're a billionaire, the first date you don't mention how much money you you have, and because you don't want you don't want to intimidate those other guys by saying you're a platinum gay the first date. So you go like, oh yeah, I, you know, in high school I hooked up with a couple girls, and then you you're like, you know, I like this guy. You say, listen, I never hooked up with anybody. I didn't even hook up with my mom, to be honest. Oh, wow. I would lead with it. I would totally go in there. First date, I'd be like, I'm better than everybody. <laughs> okay, so okay, so I, I cut you off. Yeah, so go ahead. On the, on, the, on the dating apps, you will find people saying non-monogamous, you were saying. Right. And so um, I kind of gave it a shot a couple times because I thought, why not just try, like, you know, um, seeing people who are either in open relationships and seeing maybe, like, Maybe I'm naive enough to think they'll like think I'm a great guy and they'll change their mind and like they'll dump their boyfriend and like want to date me or something. Uh, but a couple times, one time, uh, these are both kind of recent. One time, I got stood up by a guy who was in a polyamorous relationship because he got into a fight with his husband, and that didn't make me feel good because I was like, great, like the husband's getting in the way. We're not even together. <laughs> Um, and the other one that is like too soon like the first date (laughs) it was too much and then the other one that was recently like he's been clear about being in a relationship and he just wants to like like fuck and like hook up with other dudes and we have we really hit it off we talk and we chat he's a doctor like he's really in me but every he has to drop the plans is because oh my boyfriend got off work so we could have a surprise date night or my boyfriend wants to do so and so it sounds like you are you're looking for someone who's going to be really committed to you and very engaged with you and not dropping plans with you so like you're the focus of their life so you shouldn't be trying to date people who are in these situations you should be dating someone who wants what you want Hundred mm-hmm. percent. And then you're like getting. You'll see a guy who's really cute, right? So you're like, oh yeah, I could do, I could do mono- I could do a non-monogamy for him, or right. you know, oh I, well he's so hot, I could like maybe, oh well, maybe I would like it, you know. But I think it's like you, you just naturally are who you are. Right. There's no guy out there that is interesting enough that you can violate your own ethical framework in order to be with him. I mean, although it is funny a little bit to me that you're like. The idea of like telling your friend like, oh, yeah, I'm seeing this guy, but I don't know. I'm not connecting with him. I, something keeps getting in the way. Oh, what is it? Oh, his husband. <laughs> it's like, it all yeah. feels a little sordid. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's sordid. It's just different strokes. I know it's not, but it, that's how it would feel to me. It's just like everybody's different. Like, well, there's nothing to me. Like, there's nothing wrong with mono- non-monogamy, but there's something wrong with you ha- and non-monogamy. And you can't change who you are. At this stage in your life, it right. seems like maybe you, you might have been open for... Like, what is it that you don't want about an open relationship? 
well, that's the thing, you know, I feel like it's less about what I don't want with open relationships or polyamorous relationships, but it's more about what keeps happening to me in monogamous relationships. And I mean, 95% of the monogamous relationships I've been in have ended because cheating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, well, people keep cheating on me uh, and I've cheated twice. So it's like, it, uh, what is this, you know, like the disconnect this, like maybe people are just meant to be in more like fluid or open relationships. And maybe I'm just being approved. You're kind of thinking at least these guys are being honest with me about not being monogamous instead of promising me the world and leaving kind of a thing. Right, right. I mean, I'm tired of doing the whole twenties thing where you like, you kind of get a suspicion and like you check the phone while he's in the shower and all your freaking doubts I are confirmed. I fucking hate you're like, that. Oh, I'm going to cry. I'm gonna it's such a waste of your creative energy. It's like it becomes an obsession. I, I hate that feeling of jealousy and mistrust. Yeah. And Sarah, do you have any thoughts here? Oh, my gosh. It's just, yeah. I mean, it sounds really stressful because, like, you're in a monogamous relationship, but that doesn't work out because of cheating, and then you try non-monogamy, but then you don't get the attention that you want. So I don't know. Should maybe go, I really, it's really tough. Maybe go to Sarah's apartment when she's not there, open up that window, and just take a, le a leap of Peru. Oh. No, this is what I'm thinking. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. How, how old are you, by the way? I'm curious, Peru. He's going to be 31 in be a few months. Okay, okay. Mm. So if you were, you are handsome, you're charming, you're smart, you're fun to talk to. To me, I'm like... You know, Osha. Yeah, I, I'm like, I'm interested in a monogamous relationship with you. So I guess what I'm trying to get at. No, to me, I, like if you were calling and you were annoying, you know, or you seemed like a person with bad breath, I would be like, you know what? Why don't you just take what you can get? But I'm looking at you and I'm like, you know what? Maybe you're not like, maybe you're having a, you want something that's a little more traditional uh, than the, the the guys that you're finding, but you are a, a, an interesting, cool person, and obviously you deserve to have what you want. But also, I don't see that it's going to be that. I'm I'm saying I I know you're saying it has been difficult. I just feel like for you, you've got options, and there's somebody out there that is going to that is going to meet and match what you want. Like I I don't think there's anything wrong with the. Uh, with non-monogamy and I do think maybe men are a little bit more prone towards non-monogamy so when you have men dating other men there's a little bit more of that kind of classic male sexuality going around but I just feel like somebody out there is just like you wants what you want and and it's just a matter of continuing to not violate not do things that make you feel uncomfortable and make you uh, violate your own your own ethical framework just keep trying even if you get frustrated even if you make a mistake and end up fucking some you know married doctor again and then going like shit once again I got disappointed eventually you will find somebody that's looking for the same thing that you're looking for and stop don't stress off of it that's my feeling also I would not focus try to try to take a little bit of the focus off their orientation like I know for the beginning but like you know you've made the first decision like you want to start dating guys that are in relationships but also like what type of like what's the thing it's it might not be just the fact that they're polyamorous in spirit, why they cheated on you. Maybe it has to do with something that you're picking, you know? So it's like kind of tune, staying in tune with that a little bit too. Like what is the thing that they all have in common or, you know, what, are, what is the quality I don't want in my next partner, regardless of if they are polyamorous or, you know, monogamous or whatever. So I, I just think really tuning into those and it takes some introspection, but you start to see patterns a lot. And, um, yeah. Sarah, you have any th final thoughts? You mentioned that you've cheated in the past and you've been cheated on. Mm. Right. So I think that you have to you have to also ask yourself are you ready for a serious commitment are you ready for serious monogamy because if you're ready for that then you will attract that mm. hell yes that's really really smart i think that's true like sometimes this this idea of what you're not getting can become idealized and you're like, oh, that's the reason I'm not having success is because I want this specific thing. But actually, making sure that you're fully ready. What you know, when they when you, you what do they say to beat to find the one? You have to become the one or something like that. Yeah. Right? When the when the yeah when the teacher is ready, the master will appear. I sound I think that's different. That's okay. more of a BDSM <laughs> thing. Um, BDSM. So Peru, I think that that is our advice to you. Yes, be the one. Wait for the one. 
and don't do anything that makes you you feel uncomfortable. To ha- have fun. There's somebody out there, I promise, somebody out there with an even more plunging neckline that is perfect for you. And if there's not, <laughs> Moshe will date you. I would date you. Honestly, you're charming. You're handsome. You got it all. What else do you want? Are you, in fact, Peruvian? I've been curious this whole time. Yeah, I was born and raised in Peru. Peru. It's like, an, it's like me being ma- named America. I like that. <laughs> there's a few. There are some Americas. There's a, a America Ferraras out there in the world. Yeah. Did, did any of that feel resonant to you, what we said to you? Yes. I think uh, that was a good way of phrasing it. I didn't really quite think of that, you know, like looking, being re- representing what it is that you're looking for and um, not being so impatient with things. I think the only reason why Chill was getting so impatient is because I am almost 31 now. So seeing all these like happy social media couples. Um, they're not happy. Be... Yeah. They're not I know. happy. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Sarah. They hate their lives. <laughs> <laughs> they're staring out the window of the who knows what floor going. <laughs> I see all these same people on Instagram in happy relationships and you check them on Grindr. They're the ones in the open relationship. So I'm like, <laughs> everyone's lying to each other. Instagram is such a lie. Totally. It it's, really is. Everybody, the more intense someone posts about their partner, the higher the chances are that they're fucking someone else. Uh, <laughs> that is absolutely I true. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do they, there's another saying they say, don't compare your insides to someone else's outsides. You know, like don't look, you look at an image and go like, now there's happiness, but it's like, you don't know. You know that there, it's just like, the the water splashing on them from uh, from the south of France was actually you know toilet water from their studio apartment in Poughkeepsie and they're just creating some illusion so that you will be jealous that's what social media is designed to make people go I'm not as good as the people I'm seeing but actually fuck all that stuff it's an inside job and you but, know but here's the problem you guys you can't say fuck all that stuff and still be on Instagram so you actually do have to like take some time away <laughs> from it Sarah can you tell that Natasha is uh, conflicted by her relationship with the internet it's true though yeah i can tell you're really conflicted by it but the thing is like you know i'm not like a huge fan of like um oxygen but i still have to breathe right <laughs> like, you breathe on instagram <laughs> you've been no you you famously aren't are, are a very anti-oxygen comedian we all know but i know what you're saying you're right it's it's not social media the internet has transcended uh, op being optional. It is the world it's we live optional. in. It's not optional. It's yeah. not optional anymore. We all have to be on it. I mean, but you especially can... you, like Natasha. I mean, you have to be on it. You don't have a choice. Yep. Otherwise, you 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 lose out on your audience. I mm-hmm. mean, so we're we're stuck. But, we're but, in a bad place. But oh, yeah. it's it's a question of degree. I could totally stay abreast of all things Instagram with an hour a day if right. I were efficient. Or I could like read every comment, go to bed mad, look at other people's pages, look at, you know, look at mine, you know, repost something to make me feel better. I could like do that for like nine hours a day. So I'm just saying. Sarah, you must be a master at this point of ignoring the comments because some of what you got popular for was in the Trump era and was Trump people. And I mean, I can't even imagine (laughs) the tsunami of negative comments you must have had to ignore. No, you don't understand. Trump support love the videos oh really is that right? they would comment i love trump but this is hysterical oh that's awesome like, that's they a- were not it was the wildest thing that's I didn't really get interesting any, you didn't I get hate. Got called a cunt like once oh, wow. <gasps> what that's insane just as a female doing comedy i thought that just happens automatically regardless of political stuff i was disappointed stuff. <laughs> I, was disappointed. <laughs> I think though peru to to what everybody what uh, sarah and natasha were talking about what's applicable to you is i think she's uh that if it sarah, doesn't make I, you feel just, good right okay. i just think that that it's not optional, like Sarah said, but all, but what is optional is the degree to which you choose to believe that the stuff you're looking at is reality. The only reality that you've got is the one that you have decided upon. And what you, Peru, have decided upon is that you want somebody, you want a real intimate and monogamous, intimacy means monogamy for you, relationship, and you just keep waiting and trying to find that. I agree. Uh, this actually really solidified it. Wow, that really helped. <laughs> Good. So okay, glad. well, thank you, honey. Good luck to you. You're such a cute cutie and uh i think we all kind of want to date you but in a polyamorous <laughs> way so i don't know if you're comfortable with that and you know what here's another really hot tip if with if, this group yeah okay great and i think <laughs> and listen here's another hot tip dating tip when people start when you, that you get into that conversation you can say like i'm 
I, you know, I don't know what I would be open to in the future, but right now I want a monogamous relationship. Do yeah. you think that's something that, because you don't want to yes. lie either, but I think that's just where you are right now. I'm just saying you kind of strike me as an open person. So I'm like, maybe at one point you might want something like that, but right now you like really want to focus on a partner. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, so totally. I feel like for first date, I feel like it's really just a test of connection and make sure our boundaries are set from that point on, you know? So I feel like that, that if I can be clear about that and the other person agrees, yes. then yeah, I'm golden. I I'm love good. It. You're not right. just golden, Peru. You're platinum. Uh, I'm platinum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye, honey. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Oh, he was sweet. What? An, I've never heard that platinum before. I heard gold star. But I net platinum. That is some. That's some insider baseball. That's um. That. He was yeah. so cute. I mean, he, he really was like, I have never touched a vagina. He was so <laughs> proud of it. So proud of when it. When this? <laughs> yeah. Um, Sarah, do you have time to do one more call with us? Yes. Of awesome. Course. Let's do one more. Okay, we're gonna call Maria in San Antonio. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. Would you call the last two years kind of a great time for mental health? Oh, uh, no, I would not. No, I would not either. Now, there has never been a better time. If you're coming out of the pandemic, we're at year two and you're feeling stressed, you're feeling anxious, you're feeling depressed, you don't know what you're going to do next, you just need somebody to talk to, we cannot recommend enough. Find someone. Go to Talkspace. We'll hook you up. Your struggles and challenges are unique. It's time to talk to someone who understands that. Whether you've been married for years <clears throat> or you're re-entering the dating scene <clears throat> <laughs> or you're just trying to get comfortable with being single, talking to a therapist can help. So just visit Talkspace.com. You can get $100 off your first month when you use promo code HONEYMOON at sign up. Do you find yourself fighting with your partner? Do you find yourself constantly belittled by your partner? Do you find your partner waking you up in the middle of the night with things that you've left around the house, messes, pictures on their iPhone, sliding through them one by one, saying, Moshe, why did you leave this fucking meal out in the in, in the kitchen? And You know, we clean up after ourselves in this family and then punching your chest repeatedly. If you have any of these situations that I just randomly made up that aren't true to my personal life, try Talkspace. Go to Talkspace.com, get $100 off your first month, when you use the promo code HONEYMOON at sign up. That's $100 off at Talkspace.com, promo code HONEYMOON. Hey, Mosh. Yeah, Tosh. Have you ever been on a date and it's going well and then all of a sudden they drop a huge deal breaker? Yes, it happened to me last week. And what she said was, I'm going to tell your wife. <laughs> Well, thanks to the dating app OkCupid, you may never have to be in that situation again. OkCupid finds people you're most compatible with. Here's how it works. The OkCupid app learns what's important to you by asking you questions. Then the app's one-of-a-kind algorithm. I love a powerful algorithm. I love algos. In fact, I recently fell into an algorithm on Instagram where all the videos I see are... Um, evangelical Christian pastors who look like they do cocaine at Electric Daisy Carnival. They look like ravers, but they're talking about Jesus. Anyway, OkCupid's okay one-of-a-kind algorithm pairs you with people that care about the things that you care about, like puppies and reproductive rights, or Jesus, frankly. In fact, did you know that OkCupid okay is the only dating app in the world that lets you filter out singles that don't care about the issues you care about, from climate change to being pro-choice to LGBTQ rights. It's time to find your person. So download the dating app OkCupid today. Hi, Hi Maria. It's Natasha, Moshe, and Sarah Cooper. Hi. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Hi. How are you guys? You can't Good. believe what? Are you excited about us or Sarah? Yeah, it seems like a Sarah <laughs> can't believe it. That felt strongly <laughs> like a Sarah can't believe it. <laughs> We don't get a lot of can't believe it. Can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. We don't. They don't often say can't believe it when we log on, Sarah. So feel consider yourself complimented. Uh, okay, how can we help you, Maria? Okay, so um, I'm gonna be moving out to my own place this month, and um, I work remotely, and um, my boyfriend doesn't. I'm just. I just know he's gonna wanna like leave his dogs at my place while he's out working and I'm going to have to like take up after them. And like, it's not that big of a deal, but like, I don't know. They're like these two really old chihuahuas and they just like pee and poop everywhere. I'm just like so Sounds nervous familiar. that like, he's just going to want to like leave them and I'm going to have to like watch after them. Mm. Yeah. Sarah's got thoughts. So, Jump in Sarah. So I can no. see Sarah has an opinion. But they live together, Sarah. No, I listen. 
This is a boundary that you have to set, okay? These dogs are not your dogs. They're his dogs, okay? You have a work to do, okay? You have a job. You cannot be taking care of these dogs. He has to find some other solution. And you have to put your foot down, and he has to respect it. That's all I have to say. He's supposed to wake up in the morning, though, in the house they share and drive the dogs somewhere every day. Two elderly chihuahuas. They are pretty compact. He could pack them into a bag or something. You can hire someone to come and take care of the dogs. Mm. What does he do? Uh, He's a mover. He's a mover? So he can't can't bring him to work because he's like always in someone else's house. It's kind of actually, why don't you make, what do you, what do you do? Uh, I do you don't like have to say marketing videos. Marketing videos. Do you have any experience yeah, with yeah. with tailoring or sewing at all? Here's my suggestion: no. you make him an elaborate jacket where each he's on each shoulder pad. There's like a little um like throne that the Chihuahua gets l- latched into, and he can yeah. become like really popular in the moving community because he's like kind of the wacky guy that shows up with a Chihuahua on each shoulder, and he'll move your stuff. Like, I mean, how no, no, cu- I, I, I need cute? to talk about him for a second, hun. Oh, like, that's such a great idea. <laughs> Isn't that so good? Smart. Yeah. And then okay. he just, no, you don't like that? I have a totally different take. Here's the thing. Come I here, mean, Pablo. I have to, I want to show her this dog. Come here, Pablo. Okay. When I married Moshe, when I started dating Moshe, I have two adorable chihuahuas that are upstairs right now. He brought this dog into our <laughs> Why life. Why are you disrespecting Hold on. my dog right this now? This dog definitely makes my life 30% worse. He, he said- barks all the time. He bites. He, uh... He is annoying. He shits everywhere. He pisses not just on the floor in a puddle, but he has a penis, so he sprays it up every velvet curtain, off on every ottoman, on every bedspread. But you know what? He comes with Moshe. And unfortunately, <laughs> I tell Moshe every day, I'm like, can we please put this dog down? Can we get rid of this dog? I can't take it anymore. We bought him. We got. He got him at a pound in Oakland. Obviously, the last person you know, couldn't handle it anymore. You know, and I'm just saying like, but it's like, it just, they come together. I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I love Sarah's advice to be like, you need a boundary, but I, I don't you know. You think it's enforceable? Sarah, do Ooh, you ha- maybe I could do it. Moshe, I don't want Pablo at the house in the day. I work here too. <laughs> you can't, I, this is a different situation. Wait, Sarah, do you not have any pets? I lost my dog in the divorce. Oh my God. Um, Every maybe, question I ask you. Maybe I'm not you. the best person to give advice <laughs> about this. <laughs> Actually, that is good advice. What if you break up with the guy? Problem solved. The chihuahuas immediately go away. Wait, so what does he do now? What does Sarah, he do? that's rough. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that it's... Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> what, what does he do now with the chihuahuas? Well, right now, when he goes to work, he'll ask me to go on my lunch break to take them out. So I'll do that for him. It's not really a problem. But um, yeah, it's just like when I move out, I know it's going to be an issue. And I know he'll be like upset if I'm like, Hey, I don't really want to take care of your dogs while you're out working. And they're not married yet either. Yes, Sarah. Wait, so you're moving out to your own place Mm -hmm. by yourself? Yeah, I live with my parents right now. But with him or with not with him? Not with him. My own separate place. Okay, I'm a little confused. Sarah, are you confused too? It feels. No, I yeah, I missed that. It's 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 going to be her own place. I actually know maybe I did catch that and he was he's going to be dropping the dogs off with her. Oh, that's the situation. Yeah, or like if he like spins a night or something, he'll like bring his do- his dogs over and then okay. he'll leave them there at my place or something. No, Sarah's yeah. right. You guys don't Sarah's have right. like a, a a home together yeah. yet. No, Sarah had it from the beginning. She sniffed out the bullshit <laughs> immediately. This is completely insane. No, of course not. He can't. Yeah. He can't drive labor to your house. Drop it out. No, no. So, Sarah, you seem like you have really good boundaries. So, will you please tell Maria what she needs to say? Yeah, give her. What a are script. the words that you need to say? Oh gosh, put me on the spot. Oh no, here. no, I'm, I didn't mean to um, do that. I, I thought that. Well, I just mean you know you have to say like this. Okay, let's I obviously just, let's, don't have boundaries. Let's just. Let's set, let's just set the scene, okay? Do you think you'll have this conversation in person or on the phone? In person. In person, yeah. okay. Like over dinner? Yeah, probably over dinner. Okay. Wow, she's All got right. a she's a real so, actress, Sarah is. She's got like a pro, she's really getting into the character. <laughs> what do you guys eat for dinner? What kind of Okay, okay. What time do you eat dinner? Yeah, are we eating, t- you know, what are we eating? Yeah. Um No. I think that, you know, you should 
about how how busy work is and how you really need to focus. In case he brings it up that he's going to bring the dogs over, just say it's just not an option. Mm. It's just not an option for me because I have a lot on my plate. Oof, that is good. I like the words "not an option." Not an option is so difficult. So to strong. Follow up. What? It's not an option. Well, would it be possible if? Oh no, no, I already covered it in the first thing, which is where I said it's not yeah. an option. There's no. There's no. Paragraph A, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Could you think you would be able to say that to your boyfriend? It's not an option for me to watch the dogs while you're at work all day? Yeah, I think so. I, I just know it's going to like really piss him off. I have a question. Does he like, I know you're a Sarah Cooper fan. Is he a Sarah Cooper fan? Yeah, for sure. Play play the clip of Sarah Cooper <laughs> saying it's not an option <laughs> that when it comes out, when this podcast comes out and he'll say, well, what about if I just, and you just have Sarah going, it's not an option okay. and just play it again and again. And he'll be like, you know what? Sarah's so talented. You're so awesome. I love you so much. I love her yeah. so much. I accept your ter- the terms of our agreement and you guys, right. will everything will work out. Yeah. But I do have to say that I, it, I'm sensing a, a fear of his reaction on your part mm-hmm. and that's valid, but at the same time, you can't live your life, uh, you know, in terms of how people are going to respond to what you want, because then you'll never be able to get what you want. So he might be pissed and he's a grown man and he has to deal with being pissed about it. And you have to be strong enough to be like, that's his thing. And I just have to like work through it. You know, he's a, he's a grown man that chose to get two chihuahuas that doesn't have anything to do with you. I think it's kind of sweet that he's kept to, I mean, he's he's probably young. You're young. How old is he? Uh, he's 27. He's 27. He's, you know, been fathering two chihuahuas. Like, that's kind of sweet. It's, oh, it's no. a, it is. But I will just say to focus on the reaction that Natasha, Sarah, Sarah got it quicker. We've already established that she figured everything out very early on. But the reaction we all had when we realized he wasn't just saying you weren't living with him, but he was like dropping his dogs off with you is totally you are not crazy to think that that is too much to ask of you while you're trying to work that he just drops two dogs no way so have the strong boundary not an option your job is too important to you right now that's all you have to say i mean you can also really keep it because you're like a career person i can tell and it's like Mm -hmm. you your job is important to you and you you know it's like the distraction is fuck that yeah but I, i i would also say like if you just don't want to, like, let's say you're not even busy at work, but you just don't want to do it. Yeah. That's okay, too. You just <laughs> exactly. don't want to, you know? Yeah. Okay, cool. Good All luck, right. Maria. You got this. You can do it. Thank hey, you. Okay. you. And good luck. And congratulations on getting your own place. That's a big deal. That's huge. Thank That's a big you. deal. I mean, it's kind of fucked up, actually. It's like your first place you're moving out. And he's like, hey, do you want two roommates every day from 8 a.m. <laughs> to 6 p.m.? No, no. You want to live alone. All right. Good luck to you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. All right. Even even though she's super hot, he's gonna break up with her when she does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's gonna find another girl who's gonna who's watch his to do dogs. It. I mean, that is a crazy request. I, I, that is a request I would never make of a person. That's why I was I'm dating. saying he's gonna. Well, but there he probably spends a night there three nights a week. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah, before we let you go, unless you have to go right now, we have one last segment, which is that we our secrets hotline. We play a couple of deep dark secrets that people have left on our voicemail. Would you like to listen to a couple before we say goodbye? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, Tosh. Hi, Mo. So I just listened to the last secret dump, and I heard about the girl who was smoking used cigarettes. And I stopped listening halfway through to call you guys because I didn't really care about her secret and I thought about mine. And I think I could top it. So <clears throat> when I was in high school, my mom would not let me wear thongs. So thongs. I went to the mall with one of my friends. I bought a G-string, a skinny little thing, and I would hide it in my underwear drawer <laughs> and I would wear it over and over and not wash it so that my mom wouldn't know that I was wearing a G-string like a little high school slut. So, yeah, pretty gnarly, pretty nasty. <laughs> Washed it maybe a couple of times and wore it for honestly, probably three months at the longest, but that's a lot of, that's a lot of kids juice. Anyways, have a great rest of your day. I don't do that anymore. I wash my underwear at my house. All right, you guys. Bye. That is interesting. To want to be sexy 
so bad that you wear a pair of underwear for 48 days straight. This must have been during the, um, remember when people were like the hip hugger and then the thong would come up higher? Yes. I guess yes. that's what that's, it, right? Because your pants were really low. My butt, my, the top of my butt would always stick out of those. I, I never, I was never able to pull that off ever, ever, ever. I don't think Gen Z people do the the thong anymore no they're That's they're out, right? their uh, buttons are up by their like top belly you know like way above right. their belly button whereas like ours were like hip hugger like right. with the top of your butt not I, sarah you've got I, yeah i know that you're younger than me yeah the no, no, no 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 i i'm not i just i i could never pull off having a belt lower than my waist <laughs> because of like overage you know yeah it's it is uh, it is not a good I look. always had my belt below my waist, but that's not because I was trying to be sexy. It's because I was trying to be a uh, gangster. Mm. You know, I would sag a little bit. That was sort of everybody in Oakland kind of sagged a little bit. Even if you weren't tough, you would. That was the de rigueur hip placement. I thought my waist until like probably 35 was like down below what, like what my, my butt, I guess. And people are like, no, your waist is your torso i just, that i didn't know that would we let our daughter wear a g-string if that was in style sure a g-string what i what do i care what kind of underwear she wears what, it, what, what's the connection between underwear that goes in your butt and like behavior you don't want them to engage in i don't even get it <laughs> yeah. oh, well so true. what do you think sarah would if you had a kid would you let it would you let a i don't know a young daughter wear a g-string i know <laughs> I just don't know. I, I don't know. That's I mean, so maybe it's not sexual to us. Maybe it's sexual to someone else. I don't know. I'd be scared. Yeah, but everything's sexual to someone else. Like, That's you know, true. <laughs> you just can't. There's no way to prevent it. Well, she certainly probably smelled like dookie at some point. Well, now that we can be sure is not. Well, there are some people that that's sexy to as well. You just never know. All, All right, right. Let's hear another. How one. about another secret to cleanse our palate of that? Uh, that shitty little f- piece of floss. <laughs> My secret is that whenever I see my friends, ex-boyfriends on dating apps, I report their profiles because I don't think that they deserve to be happy. That's it. <laughs> that is very petty. <laughs> she Wait, what if, can you explain it again? Because I didn't she, know When her ex, she sees her friend's ex on dating apps, she reports their, flags their profile. Is inappropriate. To get them taken off the app because she doesn't think that he deserves happiness because of whatever he did to her friend. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, it reminds me of something. When I was young, I had my friend was dating a girl and she cheated on him with this guy and he got very upset and I got very upset at her and stopped talking to her. And then he reconciled with her. But then I had painted myself into this picture where this person that this woman I had been friends with, I hadn't spoken to in like a year. And I kept not talking to her out of, I don't know what, maybe some anger, but mostly embarrassment at the fact that I was not. So then he's back together, friends with her. They've moved on. Everybody's happy. And I'm still giving her the cold shoulder when I walk into a room. I was like, I'm never taking on somebody else's relationship drama again in my life. Absolutely not. Like, yeah, like it's not even a, someone who hurt her. It's someone who hurt her friend, which I, I that's loyalty. That's great. But actually, I heard something worse. I heard a friend of mine was going to send this guy that like wronged my other friend this email that's like, um, you know, uh, this is from the CDC. Someone you've recently had sex with <laughs> has recently contracted an STD. You need to go get tested immediately. I mean, that sounds fun. That does sound fun. It also sounds like a post-pandemic revenge plan. Like they're like, oh, CDC sometimes does send emails warning you of exposure. That's perfect. You know, Sarah, I've actually been looking for ways to get revenge. There's, I have a list of revenge. I only have three people on it. And uh, that's pretty good, actually. Oh, but they're mostly older. I don't think it would work if I, if I, if I the, the lady that tried to sell us the German Shepherd. If I said you recently had sexual contact with somebody with an STD, I don't even know why you hate her. I don't even know either. The truth is, all right, Sarah, you are so funny. Yeah, you are awesome. Um, Such what, fun. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for doing it, and uh, hopefully someday we'll be all hanging out in a room together in person, and we'll pretend we have Brooklyn accents, and you can be like, <laughs> "Is this really you?" No, but um. Yeah. That would be lovely. Um, and, you, sorry. And I'm on the 53rd floor. <laughs> <laughs> 
but all the wait staff that are on the 54th. <laughs> hey, Sarah, before we let you go, do you have anything that you would like to plug? Anything coming up, live dates or anything like that? Or are you just chilling? Yes. I'm going to be at the Netflix as a joke festival April 30th in L.A. Oh, cool. We're doing that, too. Where? What venue are you go- Are you going to be at? I wish I could Who remember. Knows? Go to Netflix as a joke or Google Netflix as a joke festival online. Natasha see and I. See Sarah. See me and Moshe. We're yeah. going to be at, at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. We'll be at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery and Sarah will, will be somewhere and you can find out where. April 30th and I don't know what our dates are, but that'll be a lot of fun. Sarah, you've been a lot of fun. You're so funny and so insightful. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Bye.